Uh, so two months after the OnePlus 8 Pro was released and after using it for about that time, I can confidently say that it's my favorite phone, period. Thanks for watching. But let me tell you why. You see, ever since OnePlus came into the market for smartphones, they had a plan and that plan concluded with this OnePlus 8 Pro. I've been always a big fan of OnePlus where they released cheap flagship killer phones with great value offering top of the line specs for very low prices. Every year they've been increasing prices little by little and the entire point of this was to build a foundation in order to launch a true flagship device and that's what the OnePlus 8 Pro is, a non-compromising full flagship phone for a flagship price. And as flagships go these days, 919 euros sounds affordable. With that, you get the black version of the phone only with eight gigs of RAM and only with 128 gigs of storage. And if you want the cool colors, you're gonna have to pay 100 euros more. And that will also give you only 12 gigs of RAM and only 256 gigs of storage. I mean, specs are ridiculous at this point and you're probably not going to be seeing much of a difference between 8 gigs of ram and 12 gigs of ram and the storage is always good to have and the 100 euro that you pay for it sounds reasonable particularly if you're searching on the phone market and you look at the s20 ultra and how much that thing costs i mean i have less of a problem with oneplus's pricing compared to samsung's and i've went on and on and on about the s20 ultra and all its intricacies in a previous video up there if you want to check it out but the truth is smartphones especially flagships are really expensive now and oneplus is all the way up there but it's still a tiny little bit below which i think is as fair as you're gonna get for a flagship device these days with all that being said along the years oneplus has prided itself to focus very much on speed always have the latest and greatest snapdrag soc a lot of fast memory both ram and storage on the phone always have a clean fast build of android always have a great looking display and since last year a great looking high refresh rate display and this year they're back with all of that slightly improved plus wireless charging ip water and dust resistance a flagship camera and a lot of small attention to details. Now it's quite easy to get confused when it comes to wireless charging and if you look at the specs of the OnePlus 8 Pro you'll probably see that it can only charge at 5 watts using a Qi wireless charger. Samsung can charge at up to 18 watts I think. There are some Chinese manufacturers that can pull 25 watts wirelessly. OnePlus what they decided to do is create their own dock and use a slightly different technology in order to charge wirelessly and and with that, they say that you get about 80% of the speed of fast wired warp charging. But I have these, these are just the most inexpensive and slow wireless chargers that I could find online. And I have them just spread around most places that I actually need to charge my phone. And they're only rated for five watts and they're probably slower than that. But they are a great way of using those spare old phone chargers that are probably just laying around that are probably just five watts. It's not super fast, but if, if at any point you actually want to fast charge your phone, just use the warp charger. It's simple plug-in and it will charge 50% in less than 30 minutes. The IP rating is definitely one of those premium features that last year the OnePlus 7 Pro was pretty water resistant. But for you to be able to say that it's IP 60 something certified, you have to actually pay for the certification. And this time OnePlus paid for it. What that actually gets you in day-to-day -day usage is if you like to live on the edge and you love that new squeaky clean phone feel, uh, you can just wash your phone from time to time in a slow tap water. I'm not responsible for anything that goes wrong, but it's something that I've done from time to time and I'm still okay. Then the camera. I mean, for years, the talk with OnePlus phones was this. I mean, I, I, 
I mean, I really enjoy this OnePlus phone. It's, uh, it's my favorite thing. I love stock Android really fast. Uh, fantastic screen, great specs, good price. The camera, that's pretty much what everyone says. And even if I was slightly mocking it, I always felt the exact same. I mean, the camera was always good enough for most people, but it was never really flagship quality. Everything else was the flagship killer, the flagship killer, and the camera just really wasn't. But this time that's not the case. The main camera sensor is really large compared to last year. It's it's even almost as large as the 108 megapixel on the S20 Ultra. It's only 48 megapixels and most of the time you're going to be taking 12 megapixels with a 4 to 1 pixel binning for improved sharpness and overall lower noise. But but all the numbers aside, it's really, really good quality pictures. They even went as far as using last year's OnePlus 7 Pro main sensor in the ultra wide slot on this year. So I can pretty confidently say that the ultra wide produces the best ultra wide pictures out of any phone right now. And if you take all of that, you added a third lens that is three times zoom or 75 millimeter equivalent that is not super stellar, is definitely one of the weaker points of the camera. And then you add a weird color sensor that really no one really asked for, but apparently you can see through certain plastics with it. You get a quite complete camera module that produces really, really good pictures. Probably my favorite thing about this camera is the macro functionality that you can get with the main sensor camera i mean you can use that for for flowers you can do that for for insects uh annoying your cats and in all those scenarios it performs brilliantly with all that being said i still find a lot of places in this camera array where you can improve things i mean the telephoto lens is only 8 megapixels it's only a small sensor and it's only f 2.4 all that combined creates for a lackluster zoom experience that works okay in great light but other than that it's just it completely breaks apart there's a lot to be said about using a large larger sensor with a lower aperture in the zoom camera. The ultra wide is really good, but only if you keep the software correction turned on, that pretty much fixes all the distortion that happens in the edges of the image. And finally, I have to talk about the video. Um, I don't think any Android phone is going to be able to beat the iPhone in terms of video quality until Qualcomm makes a chip that is comparable in raw power to the A series from Apple. Take that with a grain of salt. I mean, I'm used to looking at a lot of video footage from very different cameras and I'm quite aware of the compromises that they have to make in order to make the performance work and all the feature set that they say the camera can do. So in my eyes it's worse but most people are not going to be able to tell the difference and they're going to be really happy with what the OnePlus 8 Pro can do in terms of video. Two things that get completely overshadowed by all the improvements in all these areas that I've talked about are the display, and the battery and both of them are exactly what you would expect when you read about the screen you see 1440p 120 hertz at the same time that's pretty unique about this phone you see massive brightness numbers and i can tell you watching hdr content in this phone is just great you probably see that last year there was no notch and this year there's a camera cutout it's tiny, it's in the corner, I didn't really bother with it too much. The thing that bothered me a little bit is certain apps don't really know what to do with the notched area, but there's all sorts of ways into fixing that. When I started using the phone, I was having some issues with blacks being crushed in the shadows when I was watching stuff at night in low brightness. That eventually got mostly fixed, and what you get is just great OLED colors, OLED brightness, and the screen to body ratio is just incredible with minimal bezels, a minimal chin, even if you have to tolerate the curvy sides. One issue that I had that I really have to point out is most of the time when I was reviewing the phone, I had this wallpaper with a white triangle at the center. And sometimes when I was just recording some B-roll and I left the screen at a pretty high brightness for a couple of minutes, and then I just picked up the phone to browse some Reddit, you could definitely see some burn-in that I usually don't see with most OLED phones that I've used. The burn-in went away pretty quickly and I only could see it in this very particular scenario. Maybe 
maybe this was the reason why Samsung didn't use this exact panel on their Galaxy line of devices this year. I don't know, who knows? The battery is exactly what you would expect. It's not the best, it's not the worst. I could easily kill the S20 Ultra and I never kill my 11 Pro Max, so I'll put this phone uh, right in the middle. I can confidently say that I could get through a full day with six, sometimes seven hours of screen on time easily the standby battery was also really good so some days when everything was slower i just went with two three hours of screen on time i can confidently not charge the phone overnight and you could too if that's your thing keep in mind i'm talking about battery with 1440p and 120 hertz two things enabled at the same time. You can get more battery if you choose 1080p. I wouldn't necessarily say go back to 60 hertz because of how big the difference is, but there's definitely some tweaking you can do with resolution and refresh rate to make this battery life last much closer to the iPhone 11 Pro Max that I usually only charge every two days. And then you get the small details that I think really make this phone stand up on its own. The phone is perfectly balanced, so it's not super top heavy or bottom heavy, and that definitely has an impact since how large and tall the screen is. There's no creaking of any kind when holding the phone and trying to bend it a little bit or holding it slightly harsher. You get clicky, well-placed tactile buttons and you also get the alert slider that should be on every phone if you ask me. You get the best vibration motor on any Android phone. You get great sounding speakers, fast and regular software updates and the best feeling, best looking back glass on any phone right now. And you take all of those tiny details, all the new features, all the improved ones, you put them together, you price it accordingly and that's why this phone is my recommendation for anyone that is in this budget. It's the best best Android phone that I've ever used. It's it's the best phone that I've ever used. The only thing that quite saddened me is that I can't really use it on the daily because of my love affair with this one. So yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys are staying safe with all the craziness that's going on in the world. I hope you guys are fighting for the right things and staying out of trouble as much as humanly possible. And if you want to see more of this face and technology, uh, you already know what to do somewhere down there. And um, there's always a cat at the end. He's currently sleeping. Uh, yeah. Uh